out, out. There's no, there's no escape. There's no escape from you. <laughs> Look at this dog. Here's to putting on a real outfit today and not just a t-shirt. Ah, not that that's not a real outfit. That's a real outfit, okay? I've been wearing it for the last three months. right into my ear. I'm gonna start by saying this. This video isn't gonna cover everything. There's a lot of factors that go into choosing the right pet for you, but we're gonna go through some of the stuff that I went through and the thought process that I go through when I choose a pet because, as y'all know, I'm a busy girl. So here's some tips for choosing... <laughs> You're so cute. Here's some tips for choosing the right pet for your busy lifestyle. I've talked to you guys a lot on this channel about managing your time, being organized, and that is a lot of what goes into it. But a huge factor of being able to manage your busy life is your pet. Choosing the right pet for you is already a great start. First things first, the breed. We've said this a million times before on this channel, Huskies are a lot of work, they have a lot of energy, they require time and patience and good earplugs. But why did I choose a Husky? I love anything outdoors. I love hiking, I love running, I love just being on tops of mountains. I really thought that having a husky there to share that with was going to be like the best thing ever and let me tell you, it really, really is. Maybe I'm biased, but hiking with a dog is a thousand times better than hiking by yourself. But beyond just the breed of the dog, there's a lot of other things that you're gonna wanna look at when you're choosing the right pet for you. Now, some history about my dogs before we get into this. Phoenix, I got as a puppy from a breeder. I I adopted her at 10 weeks old. Griffin, we rescued from a shelter. We thought she was maybe around three years old. And since we also adopted Falcon, who is now over the Rainbow Bridge, miss you girl, we also adopted her from a shelter at around maybe a year old. These choices were not random. I chose these dogs specifically because of my lifestyle at the time. So let's get into it. Number one, age matters. An adult dog is gonna be a bit more chill than a puppy, just in general. Now I know that there's some adult dogs that have absolutely no chill, but you're more likely to find an adult dog that can chill out more than you're likely to find a puppy that can chill out. What do I mean by this? Puppies are kind of still learning how to dog. They're still learning how to like navigate in the world, what people expect of them. And while this is true for adult dogs too, especially rescues, they have a little bit more life experience and they're a little bit more tired. For example, Phoenix, while she can be vocal, is generally very lazy. Now she wasn't always like this. I got her as a puppy at 10 weeks old and she was a nightmare. She ate everything. She ate blinds, she ate shoes, she ate pencils, she ate anything you could think of that she could eat, she'd eat because she had all this pent up puppy energy in her and I needed to keep up with it. At the time when I adopted Phoenix, it made sense for my lifestyle. I lived at my parents' house, so there were other people who could potentially take care of her. I worked 10 minutes away from there, and I was coming home every day at lunch to take her for a walk, to run around with her, to play with her. I had no responsibilities, I had no kids, I had nothing else, just me and Phoenix. So I was really able to give her a lot of my time. I took her to kindergarten, I took her everywhere. I'm generally an active person, I really like to hike, and that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a dog who could hike hike long distances with me without complaining or sitting down on the trail and a husky was just the right fit. Did it take a lot of time? Yes. Did it take a lot of patience? Yes. Did it take a lot of attention? Yes. But I mean, look at her now. Half the reason Phoenix is so chill is because she's just an old girl. Don't get me wrong, she complains a lot. But she's generally pretty chill. You sleep more than a sloth. When I adopted Falcon, she was about, they were saying, 10 months old. At this point, I had a job in the city, which was an hour and 45 minute commute away, but I had somebody else in my house that was able to take her out. I didn't have any kids, so I spent all of my free time with my dogs, and I still did a lot of hiking, lots of traveling, lots of camping, lots of fun outdoor stuff that we could do with dogs. Falcon also went to basic training, and right around the end of her basic training is when I found out I was pregnant. When I adopted Griffin, we already had Tiny. He was already three, we just moved to California. Phoenix was a bit older, she was already so chill, so we were kind of looking for a dog to match 
the level of chillness. Griffin was, they were saying, around three years old. That's older than any dog I had ever adopted before, but it was a good fit. She was clearly already out of puppy phase, but she's still in her like silly, goofy dog phase. She definitely has more energy than Phoenix, but she can totally match the energy in the room. Second thing, where you adopt your dog from matters. Phoenix I got from a breeder. Was it the most responsible and reputable breeder? Probably not. I didn't know a lot about good dog breeders back then. And unfortunately, at around two and a half years old, Phoenix had her first seizure. That is a genetic disease that is passed on through bloodlines. I actually went ahead and told the breeder that this was happening and they never said anything about it. So that's just irresponsible. A dog with special health concerns like epilepsy is going to take a lot more effort and time. If you have a really busy life, it may not be what you need at the moment. Of course, we already had Phoenix. There was never a question that I would not do whatever it took to make her happy and comfortable. Yay! But now, adding on top of the layer of having a job, a busy life, and a dog is the looming anxiety that she could just have a seizure at any moment. This is why it's so, so, so important to adopt from breeders that have a good reputation, that are responsible, they're not like out of someone's backyard or on, God forbid, Craigslist. Because you know what you're getting into, you know the history of the dog's lineage, you know the health issues. If you know that, then you won't have this added complexity in your yeah. life. I know it's added complexity. It's totally manageable, but if you know that it's not something that you have time for, then you really need to reconsider. Having a special needs dog is its own adventure. And while I absolutely 100% believe that these dogs need so much love and attention, if you're a first time dog owner or if you don't have enough time, that's not the dog you would choose for your lifestyle. It would be worse for the dog to just have to bring them back because you find out later that they're just not a fit for you. The next place you can get your dog from, like we did with Falcon and Griffin, is adopt them from a shelter. There's risks here too because you may not exactly know what you're getting. Your dog may have some bad habits that you may not inherently see. I always like to take a really practical approach when I go look at dogs at shelters. Yes, I do that thing where I'm like, oh, look at how cute they are. But you kind of want to understand their energy. Can they match you? What is your situation in your life right now? Would you have the time to train them out of some of these bad habits? When you're looking for a dog at the shelter, make sure you read the card. Are they good with kids? Are they good with other dogs? Are any of these things a factor in your life? Does it say they still have that puppy energy? Because that means they're gonna be a handful probably. You wanna check out every aspect of that dog to make sure that they're a fit for you. How do they walk on a leash? Are they fearful? Are they aggressive? Of course they're gonna pull. Maybe some shelter dogs don't exactly have the best leash etiquette and that's totally okay. But look for some red flags that may mean that you're gonna need to spend a little bit more time with them. When you get to actually like meet and interact with the dog at the shelter, I like to rile them up a bit, play a little bit, and then chill out and see if they match your energy and chill out too. If they don't, maybe they'll also be a handful, maybe they'll destroy some of your things. Are they needy when you pet them and then you stop petting them? Do they do they come back for more? And that's kind of cute sometimes, but it depends on your lifestyle. Are you gonna have the time and the energy to pet them that much, <laughs> as much as they want? Or will they go off and do their own thing? Also interesting are the kennels that have two dogs in them. Maybe there's multiple dogs in the same enclosure, and that's okay, those dogs are practicing like socializing skills. The dog that's in the front, that's closest to you, that dog is in charge of that whole enclosure. Do you want that dog that's in charge? Or do you want that dog that's chilling in the back that's a follower? When I adopted Griffin, she came right up to the front to greet me. And then she sat down. Like I already knew then that she was very, very relaxed. Then I also gave her a little test. I asked her to lay down, she laid down. And I was like, this dog already knows what she's doing. And without any question, she just did the commands as I asked her. I came back a couple times and she was super excited to see me, but she wasn't jumping, she wasn't barking, she wasn't doing zoomies or dancing around. She was just super chill like, I like you, I hope you come back. I felt the energy that was coming off of her. It was very relaxed, not very aggressive, not very reactive, and maybe she had not a great past because sometimes if I put my hand up, no matter what I'm doing, if I go to like grab my hair or like take a piece of hair off of her head, she'll cower a little bit. She has a past, but it's not to the point where it would require a lot of energy or a lot of time for me to correct. On top of that, we brought Phoenix to meet her, of course, and the two of them, they didn't fight, 
They didn't play too hard. They kind of just kept a respectable distance between each other, and I liked it. It was the energy that I was looking for. It was very chill. Phoenix is an older dog, so Griffin kind of just went ahead and matched her energy level and was like, this is where it's at. Obviously, there's gonna be some stuff that you learn along the way after you take your dog home, and that's totally normal. Griffin had horrible separation anxiety. She broke out of her kennel. Falcon had really, really horrible resource guarding at the beginning, and it took time to work through that too, but it was time that we had. Falcon didn't destroy the house. She wasn't super hyper, and we kind of already knew that when we met her. But these are just examples of things that you wouldn't know, obviously, but you have to like give yourself the time and the grace to work through them. You also want to consider your life. What does your life look like without this extra dog? How many hours do you spend at work? How many hours do you spend commuting? Do you have kids? How much time do you have for yourself? Because that's important too. Are there things that you could merge together? Could you go on hikes with the dog and the kids? Could you exercise while you exercise your dog? These are all factors you want to consider. Really take a look at your day holistically and block out how much time you think you have for a dog. Now of course definitely include a buffer in that because there's things that you're going to learn as you go, but be realistic with yourself. I have a full-time job. I work a lot. I have a son. At this point in time, a puppy wouldn't be right for me because I wouldn't have the time to pay as much attention to it as I would like. And lastly, what about the rest of the people in your household? Will there be other people there to help you? What if you can't get home from work early enough to take your dogs on a walk? Your spouse or your kids or your parents, are they willing to help? Will they also help in the training process? It was super important when Phoenix was a puppy that I also trained my parents, who I lived with at the time, on what to do. I was like, if she jumps on you, you turn around. If she starts peeing in the house, you pick her up and take her outside. Everybody has to be on the same page. Eventually I moved out of there, Phoenix and I lived alone, and it was honestly a lot of work. Think about what the solution is gonna be for your dog when you're not at home. Are you going to crate train? them? Are you going to give them free reign of the house? Will you take them to daycare? Will you take them to a friend's house? Anyway, like I said, this video probably isn't going to cover all of it, which is fine. There's an entire channel dedicated to this stuff. Of course, before you get a dog, do as much research as you can. Do your homework. And if you're still really wanting to get a Husky, there's lots of Husky channels out here on YouTube if you want to see some more stuff about how to choose the right dog for you. I'm sure I'll have to do a part two of this someday when I think of more things to talk about, and I know I will as soon as I turn this camera off, but this is a start. Hopefully that made you guys think about what the right pet would be for your lifestyle, some of the questions you wanna ask yourself when you're choosing the right dog so it can help match you with the right fur baby and you can manage your busy life and still give them their best life. Let me know in the comments section below if any of these questions helped you, if you can think of anything else you may wanna consider while choosing the right dog for you and your lifestyle. We're always learning here and I just want to get as much feedback from fellow dog owners as I can so that we can help educate future dog parents. What if I don't let you kiss me? See? So chill. I was like, I don't want to kiss. She's like, well, okay. Right? But what if I want to kiss? Yes, I thought so. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. I post new things every Friday. You can tap on that little circle with my face in it to subscribe. If you want to see my last video, you can go here. And if you want to check out our vlog channel, you can go down there. And now that we're at the end of this video, it's time for This Is The Pillow. <laughs> Alright, it's been real. See you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>